Unit 1, Chemistry, Chapter 6, Lesson 2, Conserving Mass in Chemical Reactions. So in the previous lesson, we learned about uh, creating word equations and chemical equations in order to show how reactions take place. So now what we're going to be looking at is ensuring that the number and quantity of atoms in our reactants equals the number and quantity of atoms in our products. So this is called the law of conservation of mass. So the law of conservation of mass states that in any given reaction, the total mass of the reactants equals the total mass of the products. So what that means is that if you have a reactant and you um, weigh it, and let's say your reactant weighs 10 grams, then when you weigh your products, they should also weigh 10 grams. So that's the law of conservation of mass. So in order to achieve this, um, you have to ensure that all of your atoms in your reactant molecules are going to equal the amount of, of atoms in your product molecules. So when reactions happen, we do know that atoms rearrange themselves to form new products. However, the quantity should still be balanced. So let's take a look at this first reaction here. So the circles are going to represent the atoms of various elements. So we're going to start with copper. Sorry, not copper, this is carbon. Um, so carbon is one atom. We're going to add it to oxygen. So you'll notice that oxygen is written as O2, and that is because that oxygen, if you recall from your lesson on molecular compounds, oxygen is an example of a diatomic element. So we're going to react carbon plus oxygen. So these are your reactant molecules. Uh, the arrow shows that the reaction is proceeding this way. And what we are left with is called carbon dioxide. So if you take a look at your reactant molecules, we've got one carbon there and one carbon on the product side. We have two oxygens in the reactant. We have two oxygens in the product side. So when I look at this reaction, I can see that the reactant molecules are rearranged. However, the quantity of the atoms is conserved. So one carbon, one carbon, two oxygens, two oxygens. However, sometimes in a reaction that doesn't necessarily happen, so let's look at this second um, example. So sometimes uh, equations are not balanced. So we call these skeleton equations. So that's what this equation here is showing. So in this equation, we have hydrogen gas. So again, hydrogen is a diatomic element and it is reacting with a molecule of chlorine gas. So chlorine is also diatomic. When they react, they form a, another gas called hydrogen chloride. And I know it's a gas because it's indicated right here. But when I look at my atoms, I notice that there is something that's not balanced. I have two hydrogens in my reactant side, but I only have one hydrogen on my product side. I have two chlorine atoms on my reactant side, but I only have one chlorine on my product side. So it's not that um, one hydrogen and one chlorine disappeared, because according to the law, the atoms can be rearranged, but they have to still exist in the product side. So what this means is that my drawing is, needs an addition. So in order to balance the above equation, we can use numbers called coefficients. So I can redraw the, um, the reaction. So I still have hydrogen that has two atoms of hydrogen, and I have two atoms of chlorine. However, what I'm producing is two hydrogen chloride molecules. So now that I have two hydrogen chloride molecules, I can see that my reactant atoms and my product atoms are now balanced. I have two hydrogen atoms and on my reactant side. I have two hydrogen atoms on my product side. I have two atoms of chlorine on my reactant side. I have two atoms of chlorine on my product side. Now to show that I've made two hydrogen chlorides, I use this number called a coefficient. So the coefficient 
is very, it's different than a subscript. It tells me the quantity of a particular element or a particular molecule that I'm creating. So this two tells me that I'm making two hydrogen chlorides.